Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a new beta version I have of my floor planner geometry node setup and an accompanying add-on that goes with it to make using it even easier. Let's jump right into it. So here I have a simple edge-only mesh that's been matched up to this floor plan. Next, I'll drop my floor planner add-on onto this mesh. Next, we want to go ahead and add in our doors. Let's take a look at this bedroom door. I'm going to shut off my add-on for the moment and go into edge mode. Now I want this door opening to be exactly 30 inches wide. This is where the add-on is going to come in handy. It shows up here in the end panel under the edit menu. The first thing I can do is set an edge length. So here I'm going to type in 30 inches. It gets converted to metric since my system is set up as metric and with my edge selected I'm going to say set edge length. So now this edge is exactly 30 inches wide. Next let's add it as a door. I'll turn my modifier back on and with that edge still selected I'll come down to the doors section. I have three standard door heights here 84, 80, and 78 inches or you can put in a custom size door if you want. I'm going to choose an 80 inch door. There we go. I'm going to select the other doors. Set them all to 30 inches. And then mark them all as 80 inch doors. You can see I have a little issue here with my mesh. So I'm going to clean that up real quick. I want to reset this old edge to not have a door cut out. So with it selected, I'll say clear door edge. There we go. Next, we'll put in the door that goes out to the deck. With it selected again, we'll just click 80 inch door. This floor plan also has doors coming out of the two bedrooms. But instead of that, I'm going to make those into windows. So with those selected, I'm going to choose one of my standard heights for windows, or I could enter a custom height. Let's go with 54 inch tall windows. Next, we want the tops of the windows to be even with the tops of our doors. Since we had 80 inch doors and 54 inch windows, that means we're going to want the windows to be 26 inches from the floor. We'll probably want them both to be the same width, so we can come in here and set a custom width for them. Let's say these windows are four feet wide. Now they're both the same. Next, we'll want to define the outside outline of our floor plan. So I'm just going to select the vertices that define the outside of my floor plan. Go back into edge mode, and then say set outline. When I do this, you'll notice that the outer walls thicken up a little bit. That's because there's now an outline wall thickness setting. So if you want your outer walls to be thicker than your inner walls, you can change them. Or you can set them the same. Now that we have this, we'll choose a wall material. Now, one of the differences between this version of Floor Planner and the previous version is that all of these doors and windows are cut out not by using mesh booleans. That means they're going to be much more efficient than the previous version. However, there might be times that you still want a custom cutout in one of your walls. Because of this, you still have a wall cutter collection that you can put objects in that will be subtracted from your walls. Next, we'll add in our floor. Remember that to use the floor, you have to have an outline set on your floor plan. I'll also choose a floor material. This one is from Ambient CG. Now this pattern is much too large, so we want to shrink it down. So we do have the ability to adjust the UV scale of our wall, floor, ceiling, and baseboard materials. We can also adjust the rotation. We can add in a ceiling, which we'll do later. We can give it a material and change its material settings and also add to its cutter collection. The last new feature for this version is the ability to add baseboards. 
as of now, you can only add squared off baseboards. You can adjust the height and the depth. Now, by default, when you have an opening, the baseboard is going to cut off like this. This is because in most cases, you're going to be putting a door frame inside of this hole. Of course, you may not want this behavior because there might be cases where you want the baseboard to wrap around edges like this. Here, going from the master bathroom into this closet, there's supposed to be an opening with no door. So this would be a case where you'd want the baseboard to wrap around these walls. So we're going to go in here and mark this as a door, and we'll mark this as an 84 inch door. And to cap off the baseboard, in edit mode, go into vertex mode and select these two vertices. Then simply click the add cap vert button. And now those particular points will be capped off with baseboard. So finally I'll grab my camera, throw it inside this room, turn on the ceiling, and take a look at what we've got. I've simply added a sky texture to my world. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. And the beauty is this remains fully procedural. So if later on you wanted to come in and extend part of this, or add in an extra piece of wall, you could certainly do that. And it's all very non-destructive. Of course, if you wanted to take this into a destructive workflow, you could simply take your mesh, apply the modifier, and now you have the model completely as a mesh. This would be good if you wanted to come back in and replace the floor of your generated mesh with one with multiple textures. For instance, if I wanted to put tile in the bathroom and this closet, I could select my floor and using my knife tool, make some cuts. Now if I delete everything else, I could come into this area, add a new material, and assign it here. Then back in my procedural model, I could turn off the floor and move this one into place. Of course, I've made a little error here, but that of course is fixable. So there it is. I'd love it if you'd go over to my Gumroad and download this geometry node setup and plugin and give it a try yourself. You'll want to make sure you're using at least Blender 3.5.1. I'm hoping in the future to be able to add trim for the doors and windows automatically as well. And I'd love to hear from you to hear what kind of features would be useful for someone who does a lot of renders like this. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download these items. And if you want to support further development on something like this, you can add a tip to your checkout when you purchase this item for free. Or if you want to support the channel in a more ongoing fashion, you can head over to my Patreon page. You're already seeing a list of my awesome patrons that have been supporting me for quite a while. Anyhow, give these a try, because I hope they inspire you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.